This weird looking tool is a skewchi gouge and it is an awesome alternative to a traditional style skew that most of us would be familiar with. The tool is actually a mix of a skew chisel and a spindle gouge and it can be used with either the bevel up or bevel down which is really quite strange but I guess that's what you get with a hybrid. With the bevel down you just approach a workpiece like you would with any other gouge. Start by rubbing the bevel and then lifting the handle until you get cutter engagement. Once you're cutting, you can swing the handle away from the direction of travel and start removing material, just like you would with a gouge. Now, I'm tempted to say this is similar to a planing cut with a skew, though I don't think that's really right. I think it's probably closer to a push cut that you'd get with a gouge. It's pretty hard to say, but correct me with a better term down in the description below because I'm really struggling to describe this one. What's interesting is when you're cutting on the tip of the tool, things just feel like you're using a skew. Fairly controlled, but could go wrong at any moment. When you start to cut on the kind of edges of the tip though, or on the side of the cutter, it starts to feel more like a gouge and really, really controlled. So very strange because you get two very different feeling cuts out of the one tool and it's just a matter of not even a 30 degree swing in the handle. Now I will say that the Scucci gouge doesn't like to remove material quite as rapidly as a traditional skew, but that's a trade-off that I'm more than happy to have when you get this level of control, especially when you're just starting out. With the bevel down, cutting beads and coves feels the same as it would with a spindle gouge. It's just the old rotate the tool while lifting the handle trick and it works perfectly. So here, start engaging and we're rotating the tool while lifting higher and we've got our first little bead and it's a little bit tricky on camera to not block everything but we've got our bead form. Flipping the tool to have the bevel up makes the tool feel a bit more like a traditional skew in the sense that things could go wrong with a catch at any time and just like a skew you set the tool a little bit higher on the workpiece and just take a light cut. Now I'm still getting used to the tool as a whole as it is quite different, but right off the bat it's super intuitive to use and unlike a traditional skew, I've only had a handful of catches and the ones I have had have been pretty tame. I'll have a link in the description to the product page if you want to check these out and for now I think I'm just going to have a bit more of a play on this workpiece here and take you through my process and see what we can come up with. Now we've got a series of beads, but let's do a cove in this section here. So for that, I'll lower the tool rest a hair because I had it set up for the skew. And we'll come in with our tip and just flatten the tool out a little bit. We've got a nice little shoulder there. So now I'm gonna flip the tool with the bevel up and I'm gonna just work on this transition here. So a nice light touch is needed. Now I've got the tool on quite a low position with the angle, so a steep angle, but that seems to be working nicely here. Just come in and tidy up that shoulder. And we might even just increase that cove a little bit. That's not bad. Now I think I want to reduce the diameter up here a little bit so we can drop that down again. And here we go, lock that in. So now I'm just going to do what I would consider a bit of a planing cut, uh, but really it's a push cut and we're just going to start removing. So we'll get that bevel rubbing, start lifting until we get cutter engagement and start moving. Probably increase that speed now that we're not needing the audio. Now to get these nice smooth transitions here, like you're doing kind of a, a table leg or something, I'm starting the tool almost vertical, so the bevels and the flat edge are up and down. From there, once I've got the engagement and get to a skinnier diameter, I lift the handle a hair and I also rotate the tool to be flatter, so it's one smooth motion. and I get a really nice curve in there. Now this tool rest may be a tad high now that we're down to this skinnier uh, diameter, 
but you get the idea. Now V cuts is the one thing I'm still struggling with, but it should be a very similar process to with a skew. Start with the tool vertical, and then just on a very slight angle in, push the tool and lift the handle. It's not exactly a perfect V cut there, but it's not bad. I think what I'm gonna try and do now is just one last bead and we'll get a bit of a large one just in here. So we'll create a, a bit of clearance around it. Now then we could do it with the bevel down and just roll in the tool. But let's try and get a catch or not get a catch and do it with the bevel up. So tool rest is slightly higher. We'll start with just a very light amount of engagement. That's not too bad. Let's try and get the other side without a catch. Oh, there's a catch there, but not too bad. Bit more clearance. All right, so I'm getting a few caches there. I think it could be my grind though. So not quite as controlled, but still not too bad. If that was a skew, I can guarantee you this thing would have been caching like crazy. All right, well, I think that will do it. You can see how this could easily have shaped a table leg or something along those lines. Beads and coves are pretty consistent. Got a couple of catches in there, but we wanted that. I would say it was intentional, but it wasn't. Uh, but as far as a tool that I've only picked up for the first time yesterday, pretty good running so far. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Links are in the description to these products. So make sure you check them out if you want more info. And like always, thanks for watching, subscribe, all of that junk, and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.